right here. Yeah. You're gonna drive all the way around over here. Park mm -hmm. your truck and trailer here. You have a vest. Yes. Right, you're gonna put your vest on. You're gonna walk over here to this building. Mm -hmm. Shipping and receiving between dot one fifty and one fifty one. Go to the first door on your left and all the big work and see where to go. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. going back to the Wix filter plant but we did it we ended up going over here to uh, to Dollar Tree uh, it's a Dollar Tree distribution so you gave me a map here I got my load assignment. All I did was just look at the pickup and delivery addresses. I didn't bother to look at the, the locations that I was going to. And when I see Calpins, I just assumed it was uh, the Wix filter uh, plant, which is only about a mile and a half down the road. Uh, we do bring loads in there as well as take loads out, so I just assumed I was going over there. But we didn't. We're here at Dollar Tree. Of course, I'll probably be going over there uh, to get my next load. I don't have a load assignment yet, but... Okay, I think I screwed up here somewhere. Yeah, I, yeah if I screwed up. Okay, yeah, I'm a big dummy. Taking the long way around. Like a big dodo head. <coughs> Said turn right and go around. Well, anyway, we'll get over there. I didn't take the long way around. Okay. Well, we're good. I thought I screwed up, but I didn't. I got to get to the other side of the shipping uh, building, which is that one right there to our left. Or is it? In one quarter mile, turn right on Peach Tree Road. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It's a big ass place.
I was told to park over here, but there's nowhere to park over here. somewhere they told me to park against the back of that fence but there's nowhere to park over there so So we have been instructed to disconnect from our trailer. So I got a dolly down. Uh, dolly down, disconnect, pull forward, and then wait for a red light. Chop. Yeah, let's put the chop under the wheel. Not that it'll really matter, but. We'll do it anyway. Hard to do with a pin. Damn it. There we go. Now we're disconnected. Now we're cooking with Crisco.
so it has been a uh, pretty busy uh, couple of days um, today is Wednesday the uh, the 8th and we're here in Athens Tennessee at the rest stop which is where I'm gonna be spending tonight gotta be uh, in Lithia Springs Georgia uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning but I am out of time uh, I've ran out of time on my 70 hour clock so I got uh, I'm down to 12 minutes. That's all I got left. In fact, better stop. So yeah, I've been on uh, caps all of this week. Um, so I got started Tuesday of last week. So Tuesday this week, yesterday was my eighth day. So 70 hours in eight days. And uh, last night when I stopped, I had about 40 minutes left on the clock. Um, but I was limited on where I could stop, so I really couldn't go any further than what I did. And uh, at midnight, I only picked up about six and a half hours. So I had, um, you know, what, seven hours and ten minutes or something or whatever it was that I could do today. So I've done uh, right at seven hours uh, to get down here to Athens. And tomorrow I will pick up about ten and a half hours. So that's pretty much a full day that I can do tomorrow, which I'm going to need because tomorrow is going to be another busy day. So a quick rundown what I've done this week. Um, the last video I was delivering in uh, Calpins, South Carolina. Okay, so I was getting ahead of myself there. Um, I said that in my last video I was in Calpins. Actually, my last video I was in uh, Lubbock, Texas. So we delivered in uh, Lubbock. We then went down to Abilene and picked up a load uh, that we took to Calpin, South Carolina. So in the uh, first clip you see in this video, I was going to just make that its own video, but I decided to put uh, more or less two videos together and make one. So, so I just wanted to clarify so you didn't think you uh, missed the video because the last video we were uh, delivering in Lubbock. So just wanted to uh, insert this in. And now they had me a load picking up in Greer, South Carolina, going to Sugarland, Texas, which is, uh, I believe, around the Houston area. However, I couldn't haul that because uh, last week I had told them that I wanted to be home early this Friday. So there's no way I could have went to Texas and got back uh, early Friday. So they took that off of me. And I didn't tell them to take it off of me. They actually called me and said, oh, we forgot that you needed to be off early Friday. And uh, they said, don't worry, we'll take that off and get you something else. And, and they did. They got me a load in Augusta, Georgia, uh, going up to... Um, Crap, I forgot the name. Oh, Shipping Port, Pennsylvania, which is, I believe it was about 30 miles or so west of uh, Pittsburgh, close to the Ohio line. But it's nestled up there in the hills. Um, I actually pulled a 12% uh, grade getting to this place. And then I had about a 42,000 pound load. So, I, yeah, I went slow up that hill. But the place I delivered to, uh, was right next to a nuclear power plant. I got some, a couple of shots of that. In one half mile, arrive at 168 Shipping Port Hill Road on the right.
in three quarters of a mile. Keep right to Pennsylvania 68 East. In one half mile, be in the right lane, then keep right to Pennsylvania 68 East. Keep right, Pennsylvania 68 East. So yeah, I've never been that close to a, a power plant. I've seen them, uh, but never been up that close. So that was kind of intimidating. But um, anyway, um, so yeah, I picked that load up in Augusta uh, Monday, dropped it Tuesday, uh, about, I think about 10, 11 o'clock I was over there. And then I had to go to Mentor, Ohio, uh, Wednesday afternoon to pick up the load that I got now, which is going down to Lithia Springs, which is uh, just on the west side of Atlanta. So we'll get this off in the morning and then uh, at 11.30, I got to be in Atlanta. Hooray. Oh, what fun. And I got to pick a load up there and take that back to the yard in uh, Fayetteville. And um, I'm going to drop it in the yard, go home, and then a local driver will pick it up and, and uh, take it to where it's got to go. So, But uh, I'm going to do some housekeeping here. Uh, I'll go ahead and put this video together and get it up tonight. And I got to do some housekeeping. I got these truck window screens that I bought Saturday night at a Petro. And I was going to get them from Amazon. I figured Amazon might be the best place and might be the cheapest place, but it wasn't. The Petro was actually $12 cheaper than Amazon. So I went ahead and picked up a pair. Saturday, but I ain't had time to, to put them in. I've been uh, I've been busy since then, so I've been driving and you know getting up early and working late, and then as soon as I get parked and you know I'm just too tired to mess with them. So so since it's only what time is it? It's twenty after three. I got time to to mess around here, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to get these things in. I gotta cut them down to size. These are more or less universal. I think they fit like all those perfectly, but for Peterbilts and Freightliners and Kenworths, you got to cut them down uh, to size to fit. So that's what I will do now. And uh, maybe after I get them to fit, I'll give you a shot of them, see how they look. And there is the screen installed. I had to finagle this piece to get it in there. That sounds kind of glary. Still not perfect. But it's in there and it's working. Get a wider shot. Now I won't bake to death in the heat. So this thing here, it has these lines. I'm going to try to do this with very little light. But you can see the lines there. And those lines, well, let me show you the other side here. So you can see these lines, these numbered lines, and then there's numbered lines on here too. It's backwards, but you can see where they've pre-cut, uh, depending on what truck you're in and how your window is shaped. You then go to this sheet, you find your truck, and it tells you which line to cut, which mine is a Peterbilt 579, so I need to cut line nine. Okay. There is a line nine 
up here on top. There's a line nine up here that I can cut right there, all the way down. But if you go down here to this piece, there is no line nine. I've got three, four, five, seven, ten, eleven, 10, 11, but no nine. I don't see it. So I have to figure out my own cut. So I just did a, uh, a template using this thing which was kind of half-assed but it worked somewhat so, all right that's it just wanted to show that